Oh yeah. Let's go. Podcast flow, you already know. Sneakers in the NBA, the NFL for show. Me and Langston got it locked. Got the podcast, now we coming on through, we boxing, now we ever last. A day in our kicks, a day in our kicks, a day in our kicks. You gon' have to listen to it. A day in our kicks, a day in our kicks, a day in our kicks. You gon' have to listen to it. Sneakers on lock, NBA on lock, got that NFL on lock. We got that music on lock, we never ever gon' stop. He up in the NBA, I be reporting, I do what I say Everybody know how we get it, eh? Hold up, killing the flow, getting the flow Getting the money, you already know We gonna be coming on through for the city We trying to do our thing, you just like Diddy What's going on, man? Episode 3, man Hey, man, we we, we took too long, man I was, I was a little sick, man, so I, I'll take the blame on this one Nah, it's all good, it's all good We got, I know we got a lot of info to talk about uh, yeah. A lot of stuff to catch up on So, uh, yeah, we're, we're I'm excited to, to, to get back to it Get get back started with episode 3 Definitely, definitely, man What, what's what been going on, you know what I'm saying? How, how's the state of the team doing? Um, and, and, and just how are you overall? I mean, it's, the state of the team is good I think we're all on, on, a, on a good track I mean, we've We've lost the last five in a row, but uh, I mean, we we played against some good teams, and uh, just just being early in the season, we're learning, continue to grow, continue to figure out ways to finish out games. Because right now, we're not like we're, we're out here getting blown out or anything. We're out here losing by two and three points every single game. So yeah, uh, we, we we got we got a lot to uh, continue to 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 go forward with and, uh, and a lot of stuff to, to take away from each game. So it's been good so far. And then um, personally, just, uh, hey, just finding my rhythm, just getting back rolling and uh, just, just glad to be out there just trying to hey, contribute and, and help this team any way possible. Definitely, definitely. Do you, feel like, do you feel like with the start of the success going undefeated in the beginning of the season and now having this little skid, do you, do you feel like this is like one of those situations where you guys can build that, that uh that bond together, you know, go through that tough stretch to to find your groove to get back to what you need to get back to. Yeah, I think I think early, especially early in the season right now, um, yeah. us being able to go through it at a pivotal time of all right, it's not like crunch time where we got to make these next couple of games count. I mean, it's it'd be great to say all right, well, let's win the next ten in a row to really get back on track. But at the same time, it's like it's still November. And we just getting started, so yeah. Um, it's, it's it's a great time for us to continue to build team chemistry and continue to, uh, like you said, grow. And uh, it's it's good. It's good. I think everybody's coming together, just trying to find ways to okay. to, to help out. Everybody wants to do their part, and uh, I think that's that's a good thing. Definitely, like I told you, you know, when I texted you the other day, man, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Now that's what's up. Yo, yo, how's everything with you? How's, uh, I know you, you've been sick these last couple couple days, so how you feeling now? And, uh, and then how, how's OKC? I know I saw Russ go down last night, but how's everything going? Yeah, man, uh, just getting over everything that I got, you know what I'm saying, just trying to get back 100%. Um, the crazy thing is, like, you know, when, when, when Russ went down, it got so quiet in that arena, man. You know, luckily they said it's just a, a a left sprain, sprained ankle. So we'll see how it goes. We don't know the severity of the ankle sprain yet. So uh, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. But overall, man, I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get better. And once I'm 100, percent you know, everything's gonna be fine. So I, I'm not even not even worried about it. I was more so worried about you know missing the podcast and and just trying to get back into the groove of the things with uh with, with what we got going on and. Trying to just make sure everything's good, family's good, everything else is good. So, you know, it's only right, man. Yep. yep. You can't comp- hey, you can't complain. That's that's for sure. You know what I mean? I hey. definitely can't complain. Definitely blessed. Uh, my family's good. Your family's good. So we all good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. Well, you already know what time it is, man. It's time for the starting five. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it.
right. I got. I added something to the mix. Okay. Because right. this is something that I personally, I personally love, but at the same time, I want to know about. So, I, I'm pretty sure you saw Kyrie last night. Right. Um, when he threw the ball in the stands um, after Jamal Murray had 48, and he tried to, you know, go for 50 on them by, you know, when they were running the clock out, and then it's, everybody's like, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, going for the 50. How important is that that unwritten rule of respect in that moment where, you know, you're about to get that, that monumental 50 or that 70 or whatever, and then you just, you know, you're going for it when the game's already, you know, said and done. What does that moment mean? Because obviously Kyrie definitely felt disrespected and was like, he doesn't deserve to have this ball at all. So just talk about that moment as an NBA player and break it down for people that are outside the NBA like myself that need to understand that rule and, and understand that unwritten law. And, and, and how would you feel in that situation? I mean, I, I really respect what Kyrie did. Um, coming from uh, a, a big competitor myself, and and really like looking at like it, it, it's the last two guys that that have like scored big numbers, like uh, when Dev uh, Devin Booker scored seventy. Uh huh. It, it kind of like was the game was out of reach, so he had the opportunity to do it. Um, and I mean, they was because they, they were losing, right? I think they were, yeah, losing. they were losing, yeah. yeah, they were losing. And he was, I mean, they they still did foul at the end of the game, and that kind of like ruined the, the 70 point. I mean, I know he still scored 70, I'm not taking it away from him, I'm not yeah. giving him taking away any credit because he still scored 70 points. But like, what what Jamal was trying to do, I mean, that's that's a, that's that's real disrespectful to any team. Mm-hmm. Um, and to any any competitor, I think Kyrie said, "Hey, look, man, if you if you really was that thirsty to get fifty, then I mean, hey, go score when 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 the, when the game's going on instead of just trying to like, oh, I'm gonna get these last two points or last three points just because the game's out of reach and I can just I can just shoot this shot." So I I, I think that uh, Kyrie was he went about it the right way. I mean, I know throwing the ball in the stands wasn't the right move. Yeah, but it, it, it sets it sets a precedent for his team and and sets a, a a mark. Like, hey, look, no matter who you are playing against the Celtics, whoever playing against Kyrie, I don't care who you are. I'm 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 a go out there and, and um and hey, try to go go after you. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna try, you ain't gonna go and just we don't give you anything. So that that was yeah. it was good to see. It was good to see. Yeah, yeah. Now I I totally I I loved it. You know what I'm saying? And um, but, you know, from the outside looking in, I didn't know how other NBA players, you know, sort of like yourself, you know, I didn't know how you um, you all looked at it from, you know, that angle. If y'all looked at it from Kyrie's situation, you know, his side of the view or if you looked at it from Jamal's side, like, look, I need that 50. I never had a 50 ball in my career type thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I get both sides of it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time. It comes down to a respect level, like you were saying, and and I totally agree with with Kyrie. He was like, "Hey, I, he didn't deserve to have that ball if he's trying. He's that thirsty to go for it, you know." Yeah. So, I, it was just it was really good to see because that showed that competitive edge that he had. Yep. And um, it let it be known, like, look, if you if you trying to disrespect my team and disrespect me, or also disrespect other players in this league, it's not going to be tolerated. You know what I'm right. saying? So. I, I thought it was good to see, um, and you know, my my question to you: If you say you got you got a uh, ninety nine points, yeah, right? and you're coming down ten, you know, ten seconds left, y'all up by twenty. You holding the ball, or you you trying to break Will's record? I mean, that that's real tough to say. It's like, hey, you want to you want to break the record, but at the same time, uh, like if, if we up by. 10 and, and I mean the clock running out or the or shot clock about to run out and the game's over I'm just gonna let it run out I'm not gonna disrespect the game I rather score it in the, in the momentum of the game it's like we it's like it's like, like Kobe scoring 81 it's like yeah he, he was like bringing his team back and it's like he could I feel like he could have scored more than 81 but but Phil Jackson took him out because they they got the lead and Same. that was it it was it yeah. that so, was man that was beautiful to see yeah, no, nah, and it's crazy. Like just, just looking at that, for instance, it's like 
I know it's like the fans are probably going crazy. Everybody's going crazy. Like, hey man, you got to get the record, this and that. But mm-hmm. at at in the in the moment, I know it's it's difficult. But I I would say, hey, I'm gonna hold it, and then I'm just going, hey, I'm gonna take the L, and hey, I'm gonna be one short of one short of will. That's what's up. I definitely respect that answer. I definitely do, because a as, lot of people. Go ahead. As as a reporter, like what? Now, what are you asking, like a guy, like like Jamal after the game? Like, what, what are you saying? Hey, you are, were you trying to like disrespect the Celtics or disrespect the team because y'all I mean y'all were winning or like what? What do you? What are you looking at as a reporter uh, from that aspect? Because I know it's like it's 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 good to see as like a player aspect, but like as a reporter, yeah. like are you trying to get like? the best answer out of them or are you just trying to like all right well whatever just tell me what you what, what your thought was going through that yeah for me as a reporter i think i would have came at it from the approach of were you trying to disrespect them or were you trying to just cap off your career high yeah you know what i'm saying and i would have tried to figure out what exactly was the motive behind it i think the motive behind it uh, and especially what his teammates and and, and everybody wanted him to do was get that 50 piece. You know what I'm saying? They wanted him to get that 50 ball. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Get that. But at the same time, he's also young. So I would have automatically thought that he was, you know, trying to just go for the 50 ball. He's not thinking about the Celtics as a team in that moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think he would have been like, hey, I was just trying to cap off my career high. But I would have made him understand from the Celtics point of view where Kyrie was coming from as well. Right, you know right. What I'm saying so, I would have broke it down to the point that I'd be like, "Look, I know you got your career high, but at the same time, you know, there's a certain way that you end the game, you know, and run the clock off because there's certain players like Lance Stevenson when they he had that moment where he did the layup when the time was running out, different things like that, different moments that you need to be knowledgeable about, you know, in the NBA way before you even came in the league." So right, I break right. down different moments that actually happened, you know, where people felt disrespected and let him know that at the end of the day, you're a great player. You had a great game. But, you know, being being one of those players that's going and reaching for that for that extra, oh, let me get that extra three points or whatever like that, and the game's already said and done, that is uncalled for. And I would have tried to figure out what his motive was behind it. You know, mm-hmm. him being a young player, a young talent, I think his motive was let me just get this fifty. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me get let me add on and get over fifty. Right, right, right. Um, and that was probably his motive because he's young. But Kyrie's been in the league. He's like, look, I do this. So his motive is totally different. He's like, I get 50, 50 balls in important games. You know what I'm saying? Right. So his angle was totally different. So I would have broken down both ways to understand um, where he was coming from. But at the same time, I would want him I would want him to understand where Kyrie was coming from. So as a reporter, my job is to make sure that I get both sides of the story. Yep. But at the same time, you still want to get something that can go viral to the point that he can rebuttal back at Kyrie if he felt disrespected by Kyrie throwing the ball as well. So, yeah. you know, but overall, I, I just wanted to get your um, input on that because I felt like that was something that, NBA fans need to know about because there is an unwritten unwritten rule. You know what I'm saying? And there and there's guidelines and there's respect and there's disrespect and and there's a thin line, you know, when it comes to both of those. Yeah, it's a very thin line. Very thin line. Yeah, man. So what you what you got for me, man? All right. So uh I'm gonna switch up the topic. Uh I know uh-huh. we've been talking about basketball, but uh Yes sir. I'm I'm gonna take it over to football right now. Okay. Um I know everybody's like been heavy on Alabama, and my Tigers took a took a, a tough loss this weekend against them. Um, yeah. In, in your opinion, is is Alabama's program like unstoppable? Like, do you think that this is good for college football? Saying that they're one of the best teams, and most likely, like you got every other team is below them. It's like nobody else is like comparable to them. It's like they're uh, two steps ahead of everybody else. It's like, do you think that this program is going to go down in history as one of the best to ever do it with Nick Saban at the helm? Or, or do you think that uh, it's just a matter of time before everybody catches up and it's like they're going to knock them off and then it's just, that's going to be it? I look, at, I look at Alabama as I look at the Patriots. 
Yeah. That's just how I look at them. They're a dynasty right now. And it's so weird, though, because it's a college dynasty. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you keep bringing in different talent over the years. People are graduating. People are, people are leaving to go to the league. You know, they're going to the NFL. But Nick Saban, you know, continues to bring people in because people also know that Alabama is a powerhouse. Right. And they, that they're going to get that spotlight. So um, I, I think it's one of those situations where they're just going to continue to get better. You know, because of the dra- the the recruitment. Yeah. You know, everybody everybody wants to go to Alabama because they know that's where Nick Saban is one. But at the same time, that's where the eyes are. Everybody's looking at at, at Alabama all the time. You know, and in the NFL, people are looking at Tom Brady and, and and Bill Belichick and what they're doing. So Nick Saban's doing the same thing in college. You know, and um, it, it's so weird to me because a lot of people are like, oh, are they are, are are the Crimson Tide, you know, are they bad for, for college football? I don't think so because it gives somebody – it give, every year somebody's like, all right, who's going to knock them off? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that it always has to – there's always a team that's going to try to challenge them and knock them off. So this weekend it was your Tigers. You know what I'm saying? They didn't knock them off. But you guys are making the right proper steps because you're playing against them in the season – to get your team in that position to be able to be close enough to knock them off. You right. See what I'm saying? So you already know what the bar is because they're setting it. So your team's trying to get to that bar. So I think the fact that Alabama has these Georgias and, and all these different teams, you know, Georgia, LSU, all these teams going after them, I think it's setting the bar high for, for college football. And um, it's, it's making it good to watch right now. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, they're bad for the league because we already know, you know, they're gonna get to the to the BCS championship and this, that, and the third, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, they're good for college football because they're actually helping move that bar because other teams are trying to be like, all right, this is what we need to model our our um our team after. You know what I'm saying? But and, but like like go ahead. do you think that do you think that like look at like all right, for example, look at LSU like they have established like DBU, right? Yeah. They have probably the most cornerbacks in the league right now, cornerbacks, safeties, linebackers in the league, right? Okay. But then, but then you go and look at like Alabama. They have a lot of like talent that have went to the league, but I feel like they never like prosper in the league. It's always like they get there because of like them being in Alabama, but then they never like are successful. It's like you look at like uh uh Trent Richardson. Okay. He, he was That's in the league. Good example. Good example. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, like three years later, boom, like he done. Like he's not even in the league. I mean I I mean I I know like different situations happen in life where either family or injuries or whatever whatnot yeah. happens. But it's like you guys really think that Alabama helps them get to the league or is it just that they go into a program where Nick Saban is the best coach and they had the best opportunity to play there? Like, you know what I mean? So I think it's a mixture of both, honestly. You know what I'm saying? It's a mixture of both because you playing for Alabama gives you that platform to be seen on a on a on a worldwide stage every Saturday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's looking at the college football world and the college football world goes through Alabama. So yeah. If your if your name is already big at in college, by the time you get to the draft, that's gonna boost it up a little bit. Cause they're gonna be like, you know what, we've seen Mark Ingram play every single every single Saturday, or you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they, they're gonna be constantly people are constantly already watching you, so they already know what to expect. As in if you go to Kentucky, you know, people aren't watching you all, all the time every Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's there's levels to Levels to the to the teams, you know. Even yeah. though Kentucky's good this year, it's rare because they're usually good in, in basketball. But, right. You know what I'm saying. But previously, nobody was looking at Kentucky for football, so they're gonna pick the Alabama kid over the Kentucky kid any day because of the fact that he's on a world a uh, worldwide stage and and the stage is bigger. But that's just my opinion. What do you think about it? Do you think Alabama's good for for college football and? At the same time, like I, I definitely agree with you with saying that you know LSU has a lot of talent 
But I feel like Alabama has a lot of talent in the NFL as well, even though they don't produce to a a, a big stage. Like, you know, because you guys got Leonard Fournette, you know, they had, you know, Trent Richardson. And I believe on what's his name? Derrick Henry went there as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they, they got a couple of players sprinkled in there. But, I mean, you know, didn't, what's his name, Calvin Ridley go there too? Uh, yep, really went there too. Yeah. They got some, they got some players sprinkled in there at Alabama. Yeah, well, oh no, I'm not yeah, taking that away from. They got, they got the talent that's out there. Yeah. But like I said, it's just like it's not as like prevalent to like guys from like the bigger, like not the bigger programs, but like guys that are like from LSU or or like a uh, Miami Florida or the Miami. You know what I mean? It's like those guys get more recognition than the guys from Alabama once they get to the league. I got you. What what you think? You think Alabama's good for good for college football? No, I I think that uh, Alabama is good for college football because, um, especially right now with all the concussion like talks and all the different things that's going on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they never. It's never like a. You go out there, you see them playing hard, and it's never like a instance where you like. And they out there playing dirty and nothing like that. They always like clean. They always uh um they play hard. They 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 always going you always know what to expect from them. And even if they struggle at like uh for example, last year in the championship game, they struggled the whole first half. Yeah. Second half, they like Nick Saban made a huge adjustment, put in two of the start of the second half, and yeah, all of a sudden they come back and, and win that game. It's like He's such a good, like, uh, strategic coach to know what to do in certain situations, and it's like it's crazy to look at. But like, uh, I mean, he's been at he's been at the pro level and he's been at the college level, and he's been successful at both. I mean, Miami when he when Nick Saban was at Miami uh, Dolphins, I mean, he kind of like was up and down. But uh, it's just it's just crazy to look at. Like, hey, Alabama's I think going to be. Uh, a powerhouse from now on, and I think it's mm-hmm. gonna continue to stay that way unless, like, like I said, guys start looking at like, like college basketball. It's like, all right, I don't want to go to the big name school. I want to go somewhere else where I can make a name for myself and really like take it to them and really like change the culture of like we don't want to see Alabama win or we want somebody else to win. So yeah. I think eventually that that's how it's gonna get. But right now it's it's all Alabama. My thing is it's like. If you want to get rid of, if you want to get rid of that big dog, you got you know I, I live by Ric Flair's rules. You got to to be the man. You got to beat the man. Right. right. You know what I'm saying. So at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta you gotta have that team that just knocks them out. Yep. You know, and until it happens, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna you know dethrone them. And I feel right. the same way about the Patriots. You know, until until somebody really knocks us out of contention in the AFC. We're going we gonna to keep going to the Super Bowl until somebody like Patrick Mahomes or or or, or the Jags or somebody comes out the cuttings like, you know what? We tired of them going. So that's yeah. how I look at it, man. But, yeah, man, uh, jumping jumping into the uh, next topic, you know, over the over the week, um, since, you know, since we haven't um, done the show, you know, Kyrie debuted the the Nike Kyrie five I wanted to get yeah. your, um, your thoughts on that. And, uh, just talk about the shoe a little bit and what you, what you thought and, uh, the expectations on colorways and, and, and just different technology that you thought that you, you liked on the shoe. I mean, so far, uh, from what I've seen, uh, I mean, I, I like, I like the colorways that, that he's come out with. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and it's, and it's simple. It's not nothing crazy. Like, it's it's similar to the fours where um still the same traction from from what it looks like mm-hmm. and uh haven't had a chance to to pick them up yet because I mean they're out not out yet but um I'm excited to see like him continue to uh make the most of his his like Nike deal because uh I think that's that's his shoes probably like the top shoe out there right now for for players mm. and uh, I, I talked to numerous amount of guys on my team that that love wearing Kyrie's and yeah. And you can really like customize them however you want because it's it's a lot of different panels on the shoe that you can really change the colors and put whatever you want on there. So uh, I, I mean I think he's doing a great job. I mean, um, and uh, especially with like him teaming up with different different like brands to to make the most out of like 
getting all the kids hyped up about the shoes, getting all the yeah. adults to like see like, oh man, this colorway is dope. I'm gonna go buy it just for my kids. So mm-hmm. it, it, I think it means more for the fans to to see that. Yeah, definitely. I I like the Kyrie Five. Um, you know when I saw it, I saw it what two months ago now. Uh-huh. I saw it, um, you know, so when I when I went out to um, to Nike um, headquarters out there in um, in Portland, um, you know, it was one of those uh, situations when I saw it. I was like, man, I like the little you know the fly trap type feel on the front on the front panel of the shoe. Uh, with the near the lacing, I, I like that. Um, it reminded me of like you know leaves. You know what I'm saying? It looked like leaves on on a tree. Yeah. You know, and um, I thought that was pretty cool. They got a lot of colorways coming. You know that I can't speak on, but uh, speak on them. He got some. He got some stuff coming, man. His uh Black History Month joints is uh, uh something to look forward to. Um, what else was another one that was pretty good. Um, his Christmas joints were were cold. So, and then um, you know, if you thought if you thought that that cereal pack was something, he he got something coming, man. He got he got a pack that's probably gonna shut it down. Um, coming out next summer. So, okay. trust me, the Kyrie Five, they gonna get the most out of this situation with it. And um, I just like the traction. Um, overall, I felt like you know it was it's a shoe that uh. You can you can just do so much with it as far as colorways too, because there's so many different dynamics to the shoe. You got the leaf part on the top that they could they could change the colors for each of those panels on there. Then you got the traction on the bottom. You could change the colors for have multicolor for that. I mean the midsole in itself could be different colors. Like there's so much so much they could do with that shoe, man. It's it's it's, it's just ridiculous, man. And uh, a lot, you're right. A lot of players in the league do wear Kyrie's, and uh, they really rock with them. So uh, I definitely, I just can't wait to to get my my hands on a pair. And um, I think they come out next week, if I'm not mistaken, or the week after. Um, the collab he did with um, with the artist um, Taco. Taco. Yeah. Hey, who, now who, who is that guy? Know. Taco. Who is that guy? I really don't know. He just came out the cut, man. So. Yeah, because I, I looked him up the other day when I saw it, and I was trying to figure out who he was or what he did, but I never, like, found out what, what he did. I, I think he's a music artist um, from what from what I've seen. I'm not too sure, but, hey, man, anytime you can get a collab with with, with a, a NBA all-star and, and an a NBA player like Kyrie, you know, yeah, definitely, you definitely, definitely, you're doing something right. Yeah, you're doing something right, you yep. know. So, at the end of the day, I mean... You know, people are gonna know about him now because of that. But um, it's just dope though, cause like you know, cause Kyrie, you know, he's he's that he's dibbling into to to different avenues. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you do a collab with somebody, like say for instance, he did a, a collab with like J Cole or something. You know what I'm saying? Or like uh uh he did a collab with uh who's it who's it like if he did a, a a collab with Drake or something. You know what I'm saying? Like. You're bringing in their fan base plus your own fan base, so you're making it even bigger, right? You know, so the fact that he's he's expanding his brand off the court and on the court, I think that's dope. What did you think about the big Nike check, though? That's what I want to know. On the uh, the 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 side, you talking about the side? Panel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you think about that? Like, how, you like the smaller Nike check or the big? Um. Uh, I. I Looking at it, I mean, I really do like the the big Nike check. Uh, I think it's different because mm-hmm. you know, you know, most of Kyrie's Nike checks on there are just like simple, nothing, nothing too too crazy. But like yeah. how they how they connected it in the back, I think that that's what makes it like look like different and something that uh, I think the fans really really like about the the taco one that he made. So yeah. I think I think it's a good it's a good like look for the for the shoe something different. I mean. You don't want to always come up with the same things, you know. Like last year, he had the strap, and um, and then um, and then the same thing with like the bottom of the shoe. It kind of had like a little waffle feel to it. So yeah, I think I think that if he continues to like learn the technology of being able to like satisfy the customers, which are all the fans that are buying the shoes, then I mean he got a win win in in a lot of different people. Definitely. I think another thing that 
stand that makes him stand out is the fact that he wears a shoe, but at the same time he wears general releases and he wears PEs. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's also huge. A lot of players will have signature shoes, but they don't wear their P, their their general releases. They'll just wear PEs. Yeah. So the fact that he's actually um, wearing stuff that's coming out, you know, and another player that does it is Paul George. He wears his um his general releases as well. But you know, the fact that both of them, you know, they they wear the shoes that are coming out, but also mix the PEs in there, it, it keeps you wanting more. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, so I, I I thought that was pretty cool. I'm looking forward to 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 what um what he has in store for the for the Kyrie five and then um and then also PG with the with the PG three as well. So he he got some stuff coming as well. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's, it should yeah. be a good year for for all the new and up 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 and coming shoes. So definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. What you what you got for me, man? All right, let's let me go to my topics. So uh. Next topic that I uh been really like thinking about, um, so I wanted to ask you like something as a reporter. So, um, do you think it's 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 your job to ask or make it difficult for a player to answer a question, or um, for example, um, in the second part of the question, um, do you think that OKC like the the media outlets of the Oklahoma City Thunder do they limit you to ask like specific questions? Like, do they say, "All right, well, you can only stick on these specific topics," or do you, are you, are you more like um, along the lines of like only sneakers? Like, how does how does that work in in the media world? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I I can definitely speak for myself. For me, uh, you know, it's one of those where I think for me, so many people expect me to just talk sneakers all the time. Uh-huh. It's like I feel like sometimes people try to put me in a box. Yeah. But for me, I always try to let people understand like just because you know I'm I'm, I'm sneaker reporter, I try to let them understand at the same time I'm not just talking about sneakers as a reporter. Like I'm just I wear sneakers as a reporter, you know what I'm saying? Right. right. That's that's the difference, you know what I'm saying? I'm not reporting sneakers, I'm wearing sneakers as I'm doing my job. And um Sometimes I feel like so many people are like they'll see like opposing you know opposing teams or we'll see that you know they'll be like oh sneakerreporter dot com oh you just talking about sneakers I'm like no like I wear sneakers while I'm reporting you know what yeah. I'm saying so for me um I feel like sometimes they'll try to box you box you in with those sneaker questions and um they they constantly think you're gonna ask those yeah. so I'm always the, I'm the type of reporter I want to think outside the box you know um as in like yesterday um at the game. Um, you know, when Russ got hurt, you know, I knew everybody was going to be asking Russ what happened or they were going to try to, if he wasn't available, they were going to try to ask PG. Yeah. yeah they're going to try to ask PG and Schroeder and stuff. So while everybody's trying to figure out, you know, what happened thunder wise, I'm like, okay, let me think outside the box. Who was the person that, you know, Westbrook got hurt guarding or trying to, trying to grab a rebound with Anthony Davis. Let yeah. me go over to Anthony Davis and get his side of the story because there's always two sides of the story. Right, so right. Everybody's wanting to get the Thunder aspect of it. I'm like, let me go over to Anthony Davis and get his side of the story. Hey, AD, what happened um, on that on that Westbrook play? And um, what did you see? He was like, honestly, I didn't see nothing. You know, he was like, I didn't see anything. Oh, I didn't feel anything. He was like, you know, I just looked down and I saw him holding his leg and he was screaming. And um, he was like, you know, at that point I knew something happened. You know, but it's just the fact that there's always two sides to a story. And, um, you know, I just try to I just try to think outside the box. You know, I don't try to ask the questions that people expect me to ask. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I always try to keep people on edge because it's like if you already if you're a reporter and people are already expecting what you're going to ask, then you're not doing your job right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My, my job is to make sure that. A player is actually thinking about an answer, and actually, your jo- our job is to really stump the player. You know, we want to be able to give you a question where you're like, "Wow, man, I gotta think about that." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you don't want to come into it like, for instance, you score, you score thirty points in a game, and I come in there, and I'm just like, "Man, you scored thirty points tonight, man. How'd it feel?" <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. like people, you don't want to do that. You want to go in there, man. 
you, you got it going tonight. What was the difference that, you know, what was the difference between the first and third quarter? It seemed like you had that pick and roll going. It seemed like you got your, your shot going. You got a little rhythm. Just talk about what you were feeling in that moment. And also, how did you know, when did you know you had it going? And when your, your teammates started feeding you more, were they finding you in your spot? Or were you creating, you know, shot, uh, better shot, shot opportunity for yourself? So it's like you gotta you gotta figure out different different ways to approach it, you know. And I feel like sometimes you know a lot of reporters ask ask lazy questions, or they'll ask the viral questions. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll they'll ask questions when they know a player's mad. Like like when Patrick Beverly and, and Russ got into it, Patrick Beverly already knew. He's like, yo, bring it on, bring it on, come on. I already know y'all come with the Russ question. You know what yep. I'm saying? So there's there's moments as a reporter when you know you have to do the stuff that's obvious. But then there's also moments where you're like, you know what? I don't want to talk about you and Russ. Like, let's talk about, you know, this moment in the game or, like, when you did this and whatever. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to figure it out. So for me, especially being in OKC, I feel like, you know, they give me the freedom to ask whatever I want, which is really good. And um, I feel like a lot of people don't, you know, they don't understand that, you know, sometimes you got to ask the obvious questions, but but your main objective is to ask a question that has the player thinking and wondering, um, man, you know what? I didn't think about that. Or, you know, that's a good question. Let me, let me, let me think about it a little bit. Or let me come from this angle. Or, you know, you, you want to make sure that you don't, you don't do the obvious and you want to do your job and do your due, due, due diligence as a professional. So right. that's, that's just how I look at it. You know, they don't, like I said, they don't put me in a, in a, in a, um, in a position where it's like, all right, you can only ask this, 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 this. Um, it's more so like, you know, what do you think the players, you got to go off of the players more than, than you have to go off of the team, you know, and, um, obviously, okay, see, they, they definitely want to make sure that the media, you know, is putting out, putting out the stuff that, that helps their team look good too, because this is a city that only has one professional sports team. So right, you right, make right. sure that your, your players attended to. You know, either way, there's going to be some good press, but there also could be bad press. They just want to make sure there's more good than bad. Yep. So that's how I look at it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you're in Detroit. So Detroit has, um, you know, Detroit has multiple teams, Tigers. You know, y'all got the Lions, yourselves. OKC is a different market, you know, where, where um, you know, it's just one of those situations where, you know, you gotta, you just gotta tend to the team a little bit more and, and mold your questions to make sure that uh, you get your point across. But at the same time, you you look good as a reporter and the team look good as as a team. You know, when it comes to the public eye. Right, right. I, look, I know we um, haven't had a chance to really like catch up since um, these last two weeks. We've been both uh, rolling. Uh, yeah. Now, what 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 do you think about the whole Russ and um and then uh Patrick Beverly situation? Did you think that was a, it was a a freak play, or you think it was like a intentional play? I mean, in my opinion, I think it was just a a, a coincidence that he, he he was diving for the ball, thinking that was going to still be there, and then it happened to be Russ picked up real fast, and then he, he was already there, so it just like he got he got hit with that one. But I mean. It's, it's it's all in in the, in, the, in the nature of the game. I think I think it was just a a basketball play, and it just he just happened. I, nah, I totally agree with you. I think I think the same thing. If you look at the play, Russ was dribbling, but then at the same time, I think he anticipated he was going to dribble again, and he he jumped for it. He jumped for the ball, and uh, that's what he said. That's what Doc Rivers said. That's what I said. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I think it was one of those he was going for the ball. He anticipated. But I think he just anticipated uh, the wrong thing. That's all. Yeah. With, you, you, you know what I'm saying? With Russ, you never know. So, uh, you know, with Russ, you you just never know what that guy can do. He He's so amazing to watch on an every, every night basis. You know what I'm saying? So uh, some of the stuff that you see him do, you know, you're just kind of, you're trying to figure out how to counter it. You know, and uh, I think – it just was a coincidence, honestly, because they already had history. So the fact that they already had that history, I think, um, you know, Beverly got the bad rap on that. Personally, I think, like I said, he, I think he was going after the ball. And, um, you know, obviously Russ and, and the Thunder fans didn't think so. And, uh, 
you know, I, it, you just got to look at the replay. I, for me, I, like I said, I thought he was going for the ball. And uh, I think he he anticipated Russ was going to dribble again, and he didn't. And, uh, you know, he ended up just getting a bad rap. But my thing is, give me give me uh, Russ and uh, Patrick Beverly one-on-one on pay-per-view like they trying to do for Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. I'm watching that. Man, that's going to be – yeah, like you said, like the- – <laughs> Tiger Woods and Phil Phil me. That's going to be crazy. That's hey. going to be crazy. I, I can't wait for that. I really can't wait. Yeah, you you give me those two. You give me you give me Russ and, and Pat Beverly, uh, one on one on pay per view. I'm watching that. <laughs> yeah, is, is that uh that that's coming up right in the November yeah November? yeah yep yep Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson coming up. So I know a lot of people are excited about that. So that should be good. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, man. What, but but you said uh you think that uh you think it was a coincidence too? Yeah, I think it was a coincidence. I just think right. that uh it, it's all in the, in the nature of basketball. It's like sometimes he was you you're just anticipating something like the ball to be there. Yeah, it just happened to be Russ picked up fast and he could dive and, and yeah, just, yeah, just happened to be hey right there his legs right there. Yeah. I'm just I'm just glad he didn't get hurt. But as a competitor, you know. In the heat of the moment, you think, "Hey, man, that guy was trying to take me out." But I mean, hey, it was, yeah, it, was, yeah. it, was, it, was it was a good play. Like if he went back and watched the replay, he probably said, "Okay, yeah, he, he was right." I thought he he, he might have not did it intentionally. Have you uh have you ever had a a play that was like one of those situations, like where you where you were doing something and you felt like somebody was coming after you, or or it was like an accident type of thing where you you know where you felt like, "Hey, hey, whoa, hold on now," like you know what I'm saying? I've had I've had one of those uh, one that really like kind of scared you type you know yeah yeah it's like uh, we were playing and this was actually way back in like AU basketball and, okay uh, and we were playing against one team like another team from like Louisiana and uh, not, not 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 playing for nothing big we were just playing for like a, I remember like a super regional or something like that for okay. AU and um, just having to be like running on the court fast break balls on the floor. I'm like getting ready to pick it up, and a kid like actually like pushes me from behind, and, like like pushing me to the ground. Like I like fall on my knees, uh, and bang my knee up, and um, and like at first I'm like, well, was he doing it intentionally? Like was he trying to like yeah. dive at there behind me? But then, like looking at it in the heat of the moment, I mean, my knee was actually like really messed up after that. Like I it actually swole up on me, and oh wow, uh, the next the next game, I mean, I actually like. It was kind of like limited to play, so um, I really thought that it was it was it was uh, like intentionally, but like 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 we talk about right now, it's like I don't know from an instance of somebody else looking at it was yeah. it intentional or not. So uh, you just never know. You never know what what's going th- going on in another person's head. But I mean, yeah. in my mind, I thought it was intentional. Yeah, because you probably felt like you know he's trying to bang me up, so I'll be I I can't play to my full potential the next game. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, mo- some guys, hey, they go out, go out of their way to do something intentionally, just so they, they won't, they don't want you to be successful. And, um, yeah. and I mean, hey, at the time, I, I thought it was, I was, it was something disrespectful, and they, they, she shouldn't have done it. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Since you're going back to your AAU days, this goes into my next topic. Okay. Has there ever been a moment in your life, in your basketball career? Where you were as hot as Clay Thompson was against the Chicago Bulls last week, man. Uh, yeah, I will say I wasn't as hot as he was because he was getting them off, and I mean he broke. Man, him. you want to talk about? Yeah, that that was crazy. That was that was absolutely crazy. Um, but. I think that uh, I had that instance in college. We were playing against uh, we were playing against Fordham, so mm-hmm. um, we're at home. Uh, it's always every game in college uh, at St. Joe's was a big game for us, especially in conference play, A ten play. Yeah, because, uh, you know, one game where you can you can fall uh, back into the mix, of everybody. So we were trying to stay within like the top four, and um, came out. Felt real good that day. First shot, like, goes in. I'm like, okay, all right, feeling good. Um, knocked down one three, knocked down a second three, and then uh, a few minutes later, I'm three, four in, uh, going to halftime, I'm four threes in, 
and um, feeling real good. Uh, mm-hmm. Knocked down five, six, seven within the first like few minutes of the second half, and then at that point, like people are already like, all right. You know, they're starting to get it, anticipating you, like, knocking on the next shot to, like, yeah. get the crowd. Like, the crowd starts anticipating everything at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll knock down eight and nine. And then all the crowds, like, really, like, amped up now because uh, our record at, at, at my school was uh, nine three-pointers, nine three-pointers in the game. And uh, and when I knocked down the, the, the 10th one, uh, I broke the record and, and I got the, uh, the most threes in the game in St. Joe's history. So – uh it was it was crazy but i it just i was in his own that day it just i was locked in and it's not like i was like doing anything special it was just i was just letting everything come to me and it's like i think that's 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 what he how golden state plays i think that's how clay plays it's just he he doesn't go out there and try to like all right i'm about to go out here and like force a whole bunch of shots up and try to make stuff happen he just like hey, i'm just going in the flow of the game take these shots and if they going in that night, good. If they're not, hey, good. Let's keep on rolling. So it's 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 always good to see like guys be successful, and especially seeing Steph be so excited for him. Yeah, yeah. he broke he broke his record. So definitely. Uh, just, I think he's more so excited because he was like, now I got something to try to beat again. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah I feel like true. they're just gonna use that to go back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, which is good. Which is good. That is what brings out the best. Yep. Yeah, I'm de- I'm definitely uh I definitely agree with you on that, and that's that's dope though. You know the fact that you got, you still got the record to this day. Yep. You know, at St. Joe's, that's definitely dope. Definitely. Yep. Dope. Now I I guess I can bounce this off of you since you you brought up the Alabama one. Do you think that Golden State is good for the NBA right now? You know the fact that they got you know what and basically what was your thoughts when they got Boogie? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like they already had the four All Stars. Then you bring in Boogie Cousins. You know, do you feel like those five right there, you know, forming together, do you think that's good for the NBA? And, and does it bring out the competition, you know, as far as the league in general? Nah, with uh, with with a Golden State, I I think it's great. I think it's great that guys continue to go to, to Golden State. Um, just for a competitor, I want to go out there and play against them now. I want to play against them every single night, to be honest with you, because I, sure. I know that I know that. You gonna get the best from them, and then secondly, it's not it's no slouches on the court. Like everybody on the court is an all star or uh, a previously war was chosen chosen to be all star. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's gonna bring the best out of you, no matter what you you you're you're going through in life or whatever is like going on. It's like that's gonna bring the best out of you, and you're gonna play the, at your best at that at, at that moment. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I I would enjoy playing against them every single night. I know for the West guys, teams in the West, it's like it's tough because they got to face that four I'm times. I'm about to say, yeah, I'm about to say it's you, different for 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 me being in the East. With, yeah, with yeah, yeah, that's what I'm about to say because we're, we're only playing them twice, and like most teams in the West are playing them four, three or four times. So yeah, it's a different 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 scenario. But um, yeah, no, nah, I, I think I think it's I think it's a it's good and bad. It's good and bad because it's like. Going forward, are they going to still be together? I, I don't think so, in my opinion. I think that after this, this might be the last season, especially if they if they able to win another championship. This is it. They gonna blow that team up, or like some guys are gonna leave. Clay gonna leave. Uh, KD gonna leave, mm-hmm. or or um, uh, Demarcus Cousins gonna leave. So um, I I don't think it's gonna be the same team next year, regardless of whatever happens. But yeah. Um, it's it's gonna be exciting to see. I'm I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what they're gonna do. What's gonna happen? Nah, I to- I totally agree with you, man. I think you know if I was playing in the NBA, you know what I'm saying I would want to beat the best. You know what I'm saying. So if they're the reigning champions, I want to go at them. You know what I'm saying. So uh, I I definitely agree with you on that. I would want to play them all the time. Um, but realistically, I'm like, do I really want to play them every day? You know, all the time. I don't, I don't know if I would, but um. A lot of people think that all those players mesh together is is watering down the NBA brand as far as competition. You know, when you see the Stephen A. Smiths and, and different um, personnels on TV talking about it. But I think that, you know, I think that, you know, like you said, they win the title this year, um, they, they would have to blow it up, you know. So 
Um, would I want them to blow it up? No. But I think that at a certain point in time as an NBA player, it's like my loyalty needs to be rewarded. So I feel like a player like KD, who's been taking pay cut after pay cut, he deserves to get that big contract that, you know, that he's always he's he's been, you know, going for. Or Draymond Green or or Clay Thompson, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think it I think it'll be really interesting to see how the how the offseason plays and um and just to be able to um to see what they do this this season as a as a whole, man. But great, great answer though. I, I, I definitely um didn't expect you to dive in on that one as much as you did. So appreciate you on that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What what you got for me next on for your talk? All right, the next topic I got is um, all right. With with go on to sneakers now. Okay. Um, so your thoughts on the sneaker industry right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I think that the quality of the sneakers has changed over the years. Um, do you think that like specific brands like Nike and Jordan and Adidas? Do you think that they've uh taking a back seat and going towards an approach of not trying to please the players in the comfortable level of the shoes and the the safety of the players rather than going towards um just like producing mass product of the shoe and just getting as many shoes as they can out there to sell and not worrying about the safety of the like the kids and the players nowadays um give give me your thoughts about like what do you think about the shoes i mean i know you you're a big sneaker head and you know yeah. a lot about sneakers but yeah give me your thoughts about like the brands i think i think i think this is exactly what it is like the general release pairs that come out to the public i feel like they get a a, a smaller they get a what is it like a lower grade of quality if if that makes sense yeah, right. um, you know what I'm saying? So as in, for instance, like if you get uh, like I know I've seen Russ, KD and PG the quality and leathers and different materials on their PEs are totally different from the pairs that come out general release. So the companies will take care of the players pair and, and, and mold it to their foot and, and make sure that the, they have the, the top quality you know, top quality uh, materials, as in when they do a general release to the mass public, that pair will probably miss, you know, the quality premium leather or they'll have a, a, a decent leather, but it won't be the top tier leather that the actual NBA player gets. You know what I'm saying? So I can understand that, you know, from a from a business aspect, because you want to make sure that the player is is taken care of. You know, you want to make sure that the te- the player has exclusiveness to his product. So I totally get that, and that's the same thing with um with Jordans. You know, back in the day, the mesh, the mesh, and, and the different materials, and you would you can attest to this. The thirteens, you know, the 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 three M on the you know on the thirteens used to pop pop. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Now when you get the thirteens that come out you know in the recent years that 3m is not popping anymore or it's just actually you know leather on top of it or something like that so there's different materials that are being used but at the same time i think brands are using the 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 top quality for the players which they need to be in 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 all reality you know what i'm saying so the players are more the players need to have the exclusiveness and i think that's what brands are doing there they're using the 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 top premium leathers in the new buck and all the original tough product and, and materials for the players. And then when they use the, when they have quick strikes, like the public schools and different things like that, they use that premium leather for those when they general release, because they're like, this is a quick strike. So yeah. in order to get the the top quality, they're not going to give it on every single, every single um, shoe that comes out. But if you get like a quick strike shoe or you get, you know, something that's really rare or, you know, and, and it's what Nike basketball is doing is impressive too because what they're doing is they're doing the TVPEs where it's like you'll get a, a shoe that Kyrie or 
or PG is wearing or KD is wearing like the what the, you know, the what the KD 10 and different things like that. And they'll yeah. release them. They'll release them in certain places. So you're still getting the same quality as the player gets, but it's a smaller qu- quantity. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. So you, that's what's that's what I think people are starting to get to now. And I think Nike, I think Nike's ahead of the curve with that. You know, as far as as far as um, you know, the top quality shoes, well, what they're doing is they're just releasing them in smaller quantity. So it's like, hey, you're getting the same exact shoe, but there's just not that many. So it makes you a part of the exclusive club that the that the players in. And um that's the same thing with, with Puma. Puma's doing the same thing. They're releasing the 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 um you know the Puma Clyde Destruct, you know, disrupt, but they're they're releasing them in different remember how they released them in different cities first. Yep. And then they were like, all right, let's do a general release or whatever like that. But what they're doing is they're testing all the products first with other players, you know, like Rudy Gay, Boogie Cousins, uh Terry Rosier, and then they then they're gonna bring them out, you know, to the general public. So you want to make sure you have exclusiveness, and I think that's what these brands are doing. And um, is it good all the time? No, you know what I'm saying because you'll get you'll get uh, players that get some PEs, and I'm like, man, I really, really wish we were able to get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm about to say because like, what do, what do you oh, think about all like the players getting the different colorways? Like, do you think yeah. that the fan, the fans should get those colorways too, or not really? Uh, I it, it just depends, like. In the in the case of PG, I feel like the OKC fans need those PEs. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's not it's not a big city. You know what I'm saying? Like you got KD in the Bay, you got Kyrie in Boston. Those are big markets as far as Foot Locker's go and, and 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 Nikes go. You know what I'm saying? As in with Oklahoma City, we ain't got no Nike town. We ain't got none of that. We just got a small little house of hoops in the mall. So it's right. like. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when when PG pl- wears something, wears a PE or something that's like an OKC based PE. I feel like you know they should be dropping those in the mall exclusive. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like thirty pairs or whatever like that. Sort of like what KD used to do with the Nerfs and and the Weatherman. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I feel like they need to bring that exclusiveness ex- exclusiveness back, and I feel like Nike will do it. And uh, from from the people I've talked to at Nike, you know, they're going to try to do it this year. So, you know, we'll see. But as far as quality, I think that uh, the players definitely get the top quality no matter what. And then uh, the general releases, you know, especially if it's like a mass release, like how Air Jordan be doing with the Concords, you know, the Concord 11s. Yep. Like, that's going to be a mass general release. So you're going to get millions of pairs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you get all those pairs, you know, if Jordan was still playing, his quality would be a little bit better than what that mass general release is going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So yep. back like back when Jordan was playing, his leather was 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 hard leather. You know what I'm saying? That pad leather was hard. But when you get the pair that comes in general release, you can you can mush it down a little bit. You can crease it a little bit. You see what I'm saying? You crease it easy. Easy, you know? So that that's definitely the difference between the um definitely the difference between the two. What you think? No, I think that um the biggest thing going forward for a lot of brands is that especially for my brand, it's like with Q four, right? Yeah. A lot of fans saying they see me wearing the different customizations of the shoes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of fans say, "Hey, I want, I want those shoes too. Oh, I want to, oh, I want to get the yeah. shoes with your feet." Yeah, that's that's the toughest thing right there. It's so it's so tough because, like, you want to give it to the fans, but it's like, do I really want to get it to the fan? Because once the fan get 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 a part of like the shoe, then they have more creativity than me. It's like then they, yeah. they look at me and like, man, I got I got better heat on than you, you know. Yeah, and then and then at that point, you know, you're just like, man, you, yeah, it's tough, it's tough, bro, it's tough, yeah, especially but, especially with you having your own shoe. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't want nobody to one up you, right? And, and that's why I, that's why I respect Kyrie so so much because he has his own PEs that he he rocks, right? Yeah, but then like you said earlier, and uh, and I and I talk, 
he has those uh like the general releases to the public mm-hmm. that he rocks as well. But it's like the what it's like the price comes down on on the like the general release of one, right? Yeah. That what it is. Yeah, it's like I think they're like a hundred and twenty dollars or maybe they're like eighty dollars, whatever they are, but it's like regardless of that, it's just that he always is thinking about the fans. And it's like even if like uh the other day when they played they played OKC out there. Yeah, when he had the, the, the yeah, when he had after the, the game, like the kid had on like the, the Uncle Drew had Uncle on, Drew, yeah, like, that was dope. Yeah. And like he like as soon as he saw that, he was like, Well sure, I'm gonna take these off and give it right to him. It's like he knows that's only a one on one. Nobody else is gonna wear that. That kid is the only one that has that pair of shoes. Yeah. So it's like that's gonna like stick with that kid for the rest of his life. That's gonna stick with those fans for the rest of his life because it's like definitely man, if I really do something like that he likes so he understands, he'll make sure he'll hook me up with a pair of those shoes. Yeah. So I think I yeah. think that when it when it comes to that, like with the fans like being interactive like that, I think that's dope. I mean I want I wanna do that myself. So I was gonna say, man, like what in, in your position, I feel like you could have you could do that. You know, and this is here. This is why I say that because if you notice the 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 customs that you had, you know, for your shoe, you know, they were all based off of the past. Now, yeah. So it's like when you rock the the when you rock the um the Chucky joints. Yep. You know what I'm saying like Halloween's over, so you already know. All right, I got another one in the bag. You could be like, here, you know, you can interact with a fan and, and give them that one because you're like, you know what. Next Halloween, I'm going to have something totally different. Yep, yep, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like the customs that you had were based off of off of months, like the breast cancer awareness and, and different things like that. So it's like people are like, what's next? You going to do Thanksgiving? What you got? You got, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, look, people, are, you got people on their heels right now. So it's like the fact that you you got stuff that's themed off of, off of different moments. I think you can one off and be like, you know what? These are the Chucky joints. Let me give them to a special fan just to be able to get that, create that buzz around it. You know what I'm saying? Because you giving one shoe away and that getting on the NBA, the NBA's Twitter on on the NBA's Twitter account or Instagram account, they're gonna be like, oh, they're gonna have to talk about the LG nines. You feel me? Have to talk about it. So when you do that, that's what Kyrie's doing. Kyrie's using the NBA as word of mouth. Yep. Because he he has the NBA helping selling his brand. You know what I'm saying? Because the NBA is like, oh, look what he just did. He just gave it out to Uncle Drew. Yep. You know, so my thing is, if you got that special fan that's like, oh, please, 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 let me let me get it, let me get it. You know, you never know who has the camera on you at that time. You never, you never know. know. Everybody, everybody's a journalist nowadays. Everybody's a journalist. You see what I'm saying? So that's word of mouth. So you never know that moment, how special that moment could be. And the fact that your customs were definitely all over the place. You know, you giving away one, I think, can help out the brand. So any future fans that are listening in Detroit, you you might get lucky. Yeah, you might get lucky. Be hey, be on the lookout, cause uh, hey, once I <laughs> once once my once my team at Q Four like hooks me up with some more shoes, then I'm gonna start giving them away. So be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Definitely, definitely. My thing is, and, and this is why I texted you the other day. Well, last night. So with Q Four. You know, each one had on the Nike Kobe ADs. Yeah. So with Q4, how does that work? Is it one of those situations where it's like they didn't have the shoe ready or or like, like you know what I'm saying? Being a brand mate, talk about like that situation because as soon as I saw it, I was like, whoa. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it caught me off guard. Yeah. Yeah, you no, know? It, it, it actually caught me off guard the other day too because um, – I forgot what I was doing, but I just happened to be on like I'm I'm big on like giddy images. I love like going check out like yeah. photos they took of like the game, my shoes, all that. Yeah. So like I was like, well, let me check out see what Etron wore tonight. So I went and checked it out. Um and I'm like, hold up, like he got on some another brand. I'm like, well, what, yeah. what's going on? Um so then I actually like talked, I actually called him up, checked in, like seeing what's what's going on, how everything's going and yeah. Uh, just to talk to him about it, um, it's crazy that like Q4 is like such a new brand and such a um, just like one to please everybody brand that 
Mm-hmm. It's it's been it's been tough like the last couple of months because a lot of fans have been reaching out to me trying to uh, figure out where their shoes are at or trying yeah, to they want to purchase you know what I'm yeah, saying it's, yeah trying to get the shoes so it's like uh, I mean I know like everything's kind of been like really delayed and I think something happened at the factory back in China or whatnot uh, because it's like the being based out of L A but then having to go over to China to get the shoes is kind of like it's like a catch twenty two. It's like yeah, I wish I wish it was it was being made over here, but it's like at the same time, it's like you know the quality is, is like so much better over there and so much course, cheaper. Of course. Yeah, and um, just myself, like I just like I happen to be able to like save most of my shoes from the summer. I just played it out smart where I knew I wasn't gonna be able to rock most of them in the summertime, and I could save them and then have them customized. So I already had it in my mind like what I was gonna do. Yeah, so that's why like I'm able to I'm I'm having more shoes right now, and each one is like kind of like, uh, I mean I'm I'm get, I'm, get, I'm getting to the point now where I'll have probably about like five or six more shoes left before I start running out of shoes to wear to, in games. So it's okay. like, yeah. So it's like he's at the point now where it's like, well, I, what else do I wear? Like, I can't wear the shoes I wore last season because I run them down. It's like, yeah. Being in the NBA is is so tough. Like people don't understand this. It's like college basketball is completely different. High school basketball is completely different. Where you might play like two games a week in high school. College basketball, the most you can play is probably like two or three, mm-hmm. depending on if you're in the tournament or whatnot. Yeah. And then in the NBA, you can play three to four in a week. And yeah. And with that, with that comes. The shoes get run down faster. Uh, the quality of the shoes is, is like, it just, I mean, it, the wear and tear in the NBA is so much, like, more torque on the body, so much more torque on your shoes that you can only wear these shoes two or three games, if that, and then that's it. You're on to your next shoe. Yeah. And I, remember, I, remember, I remember going, well, when I was in college, uh, I remember talking to Willie, Re- uh, Willie Green about this, uh, my OG. Yeah, like he was saying, like, was saying, like every game he would wear a new pair of shoes, and at the time, I'm like, shoot, man, I'm wearing like one pair of shoes for like two, three weeks. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't need yeah. to switch out. I'm good. I'm, I, I know this shoe is good. I don't have to worry about wearing no other shoe. Yeah, and like now that I'm like at this point now, like, hey, God willing, I've been blessed to be at this point, but now I'm like, I feel like I'm bougie now. It's like, dang, like I gotta change our shoes almost every game or every other every other day. It's like. Yeah, it's like it's crazy to think that, but it's it's true. It's like your 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 feet are your most important that's part your, of your body. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's your investment, bro. That's that's your wheels, and it's like you yeah. got to take care of them. It's like you gotta you might not be in a regular car changing out your wheels every day, but uh, you might have to like start the engine up a little a little faster to try to make sure everything yeah. is like rolling. So yeah, y'all 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 definitely got to take care of yourself because that's. Y'all body is y'all money maker. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Health, so health as well. Yeah, and that's why I'm yeah. like, all right, well, let me make sure that hey, I take care of that. So yeah, with Q4, hey, that's that's our biggest thing right now. And I talked to this. I was actually talking about this with uh with Glenn Robinson the other day. It's like yeah, he's with Lee Ning, and um, he has like like a box load of like we were talking about last episode. Yeah, like, yeah a box yeah. load of shoes. And he got like two hundred pairs of shoes that he didn't just had over the last like two three years that didn't like accumulated over time. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that this this summer it kind of sucked because uh, the Li Ning factory or something like that kind of like burned down over there. Oh wow! And I didn't so, know that. Now, so now like guys' shoes aren't coming in as fast as they like were coming in. Mm-hmm. So, so like he's been wearing all the older models that like he's had in the past, and it's kind of like it's helped him out because he saved them. Yeah, that's good. And um, and like I know like a couple guys have left Lee Ning, and now they're wearing different things. Like Tyler Johnson, like my man, he uh he was wearing Lee Ning last season, and then now he's wearing Jordans on the court. So I'm like. I guess that really affected a couple guys. So, like, hey, I was, yeah. they, were, they were getting paid to wear the shoes, and then all of a sudden, like, the shoes weren't coming in as fast as they thought. So, mm-hmm. now, like, hey, either I'm going to go with this company and, and just, 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 hey, take the risk of, like, wearing one shoe for a while and 
Yeah. Or, or I'm gonna change up. So that's what he, I think he's doing. Yeah, because I was, I, you know, my thing is, you know, since you always say that the intake, like, you know, the product that you intake from Q4, you know, is, is a little slowed down. My thing is, what if you do get to that last pair and you bust through them, you know what I'm saying, or they, or they run down, you know, then what? You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to, what are you going to do? And, and is, it, is it against, you know, your contract with them to, to wear another brand or what is another brand that is acceptable? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, that's what I, you know, one thing about, uh, about you know, sneaker companies, they never want to see you in somebody else's brand. Right, you know right. Because right. that's the same thing with Puma when they had to deal with uh, DeAndre Ayton wearing the Kobe's. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you get to that point, you know, is there something in your contract that's like, okay, you can only wear Nikes or you can only, you know, you got to, cross the brand off, you know, put tape over the check or, you know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to that point, it, God, God willing, it doesn't. But if it did come, you know, is there something that, um, that you have worked out with them where it's like, look, I know I ain't got the product, but I got a, I still got a ball. So what can I wear? Yep. 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 No. Nah, and that's why I'm just like, like you said, I'm just hoping it doesn't come to that point. But, uh, Hey, if it does, then I just, I just try to, Hey, manage as best as I can and hopefully the shoes will be on the way or, or yeah. try to find a way to get it to me because I mean that's that's important because I'm especially for my for my image right now like being able to wear like you wear shoes. your shoe yeah. it's your shoe yeah it's like a lot a lot of people like every game are like looking to see hard right, what's what's laying out on the court tonight because it's like exactly, exactly before the game of yesterday um everybody's like yo yo what you wearing tonight what you wearing and I'm like Cause it was it was uh hoops for troops, and so people were like, "Well, are you gonna wear some Veteran Day kick, some Veteran uh, shoes?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I actually didn't have a pair yet, um, because my 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 guys making them right now, but it's like I gotta stay on top of it because everybody's watching and they're asking, yeah. like they they like in their mind, like, all right, well, let me see what Lane wearing tonight, cause I, I'm gonna be locked in to see. So I got I just gotta stay on my P's and Q's, man. That's why it's like I don't want you to run out of product, cause I think you got the the buzz is there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Like, I don't want you to get to, all right, let me let me freak these New Year's Eve joints, and then it's like, uh-oh. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Because right. it's like you already got everything covered up to New Year's Eve, and it's like, all right, come with the product now. I'm like, I, you know, we're going into the new year now. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, this and, this and this takes me right into my my next question for you. Yeah. My last one. This is my last one. Uh-huh. Uh, do you think, like, risking your career to wear like the hottest shoes is like is it worth it is it worth it for a player like you like say for like um the other day peter tucker like i've seen numerous my players have worn them peter tucker um uh who else was wearing the other day oh uh courtney lee warm um uh, and then josh hart warm um as well the um the fear of god yeah you know, and, and Nike uh, shoes in, in the games, and I've been like trying to figure out like, are they comfortable? Or are they like, or are they just doing it to do it? Just doing it to do it, and it's like I know PJ. Like sometimes I'm like questionable, like his shoe, uh, like just spectrum because sometimes it's like it's off the wall. Sometimes it's just like, all right, you you risking a lot to wear these shoes. Or like yeah, you, know, you, you, you trying too hard sometimes. I mean, I know I know he's a sneaker king and all, but it's like. You trying too hard to like, yeah. He's trying to get that up. Show, like exactly what you have, and I mean, and he's a sneaker free agent too. It's not like he's like with a specific brand. He's been a sneaker free agent his whole career, really. Yeah. See, I, yeah. My thing is, yeah. I, for for instance, like you said, it's like, do you take your do? You, are you taking your craft seriously, or are you taking the clout seriously? You know what I'm saying, like. Which one is more important? You know, and uh, sometimes I feel like, you know, PJ gets caught up in the in the in the uh, the sneaker clout because he is a right. sneaker king. He's a sneaker. Yep. We we give it to him. Oh yeah, saying? for sure, for sure. Yeah, hands down. But it's like certain stuff. Like I'm 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 thinking he's gonna wear the Air Mags or something. There. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I, I I don't know what to expect from him now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um. I saw him in the Yeezys. I remember he was in the um, Red Octobers. 
Um, what else did I see him in that was kind of crazy? I'm trying to think off the top. He was in the Fair of Gods the other night, and I was like, whoa. So, yeah, you know, my thing is he knows that everybody's looking at what he's wearing, definitely. Like, that's a hands down, like, no matter what. But it's like how important – sometimes I, I wonder how important – is it to to get the sneaker crown or keep it? Because his rotation, sometimes he's changing like per quarter. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, because just like what you said, like some players, they, they stay in the shoe for like three, four games. Like with him, he's changing sneakers every quarter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. I don't know if he does it. Like, all right, let me get some shots in this joint tonight or you know, I don't know what his I don't know what his mindset is. But um <laughs> but for me, you know, seeing that, I do get enjoyment out of it because he's bringing out some stuff that I'm like, man, I haven't I haven't seen those in a minute or you know what I'm saying? Like when he came out the cut with the um with the leopard print LeBrons. Right, right, right. You know and like stuff like that. I'm like, yo, I haven't seen those in a hot minute or or something like that. But then also I think he sends a he sends a lot of messages through his his sneakers as well because remember when North Carolina um, the players got in trouble yep. you know for, for giving the peas away he's like okay I'm gonna wear the North Carolina peas just to just to prove a point yep. you know what I'm saying? so like and same thing with the Oregon joints and Ohio State joints so he got a lot of stuff that um you know that that's just hard to get get your hands on and um. Sometimes I wonder, are they comfortable or are he is he just doing it for show? But majority of the times, if you notice, he'll wear like whatever the crazy heat is or the hype beast heat. He'll wear it the first quarter and then he'll switch into something more comfortable, like a penny or or like a LeBron that he's already worn previously. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like he he wants to get that that sneaker shot, and then it's like, all right, let's get serious. All uh, right, yeah, let's get serious now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he's he's out. Guarding the best player for for whoever whoever they're playing against, that's, you know. Yeah, and that's why it's so tough because it's like he really on his, he's a rough rider on that team. You know what I'm saying? So when he's when he's rocking that heat, it's like all right, let's do this for a quick moment. I feel like then I gotta lock in defensively, you know, because the fear of God's like they do go all the way up. You know, it does look comfortable, but at the same time, it's like how comfortable are they? We never will know until we get the release. You know what I'm saying? Until we until we actually get our hands on it. Yep. Um, but I do commend him though, because it's not like he does it the whole game. Yeah. Which is out, and he and he he understands when it's like, all right, let me get comfortable, comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my thing. If you wasn't with Q4, would you have tried to go down that road? That that PJ's going as far as trying to compete for the sneaker king because I feel like you got a lot of you got a lot of heat, bro. So yeah. it's, would you want to rock some of that heat on the court and be like, "Look, I'm here too." No, nah, I will be rocking a lot of heat. I mean, um, because uh, I will say, as of lately, I've like kind of like dispersed on like buying sneakers as of lately because just just because my you know we, I had my son this summer so. Yeah, I've been trying to make sure he's been good, trying to get his toys and trying to get stuff for him together. But um, I, I think I think like if uh, if I if I was a free agent, I probably would be wearing like most of the, like the craziest heat that Justin dropped, and uh, and I would have been I would have been taking it back like a lot of throwbacks because most of the newer kicks they're cool, but yeah, at the same time it's like some of them aren't, aren't comfortable to me, and yeah. and I remember I remember I had I ran this issue. Uh, my second year when I was with Nike, and there was a shoe that was older that I liked. I really mm-hmm. liked it. It was really comfortable. But the second, the the third oh, year, with now me, you can't you can't say that. Come on, now name the shoe now. Huh? Name the shoe now. Oh man, oh man. Um, so the the I'm trying to think. What's the, what was the name? The name was the the Run the Ones. It was it was the um the old school. It was actually the old school PGs, but then they they changed it to the uh the James Hardens. Okay, okay, okay. Sort they, of like the, the the um the one that came out before the Crusaders. Uh, I think that was it. Oh well, no, no, I think, I think it came it, it came out right after it. it came out right okay, after. Okay, okay, okay. All right, yeah, I know which one you're talking about with the yeah. check front. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. And they like it. ran up the side. Yeah. So the, so those I love those. Got you. But then the, the model that came after that, it was like a different material in the front. It wasn't like as soft as the as the, the ones before that. It was like kind of like harder. And so like being flat footed kind of sucks, especially for myself uh, playing so many games and being able to take care of my feet. I gotta I gotta find shoes that are comfortable. Yeah. And they're able to like give me a little traction and give me uh, the same like uh, ability to like, hey, I'm flying up and down the court because that's that's my job. I got to be up there going up and down the court, guarding the best guy, and I got to be flying off screens trying to knock down shots. Definitely. So um, I really have to be like cautious of like what I'm wearing because high tops, I can't really move. Um, I mean, there they, 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 are even some uh, some low tops that are kind of bulky that I just I, I can't rock them. So uh, at the time, I just like, all right, well, uh, let me just go online. At the time, I was like, oh, I'm going to eBay and just find ten pair that I can rock that I know it doesn't matter about the color. Like the color is like kind of similar to at the time. I think I was with uh, I was with New Orleans, so it's like if I can find those same colors, I'll be straight. Yeah, and so I literally found. <laughs> Nine, ten pair of them, and then I was straight for the rest of the year. But um, it's just, it's just crazy. Like I look back, and so like, when I'm, you was so when you was with Nike, they they was like, "Hey, look, we can just give you what's the latest product. We can't give you the stuff that came out previously." It, it I, I don't want to I don't want to throw them on the bus and like that. I'm just saying, like it's it was it was tough at the time. That's all I'm saying. Okay, all right, no, I got you. Cause yeah. we, but from the outside looking in, I always thought they could reach back and get that product. So I, this, I, I, this I wish. is something I'm listening. This is new to me. Yeah, nah, my my boy Ish, uh, like he, I don't even know. I forgot the name of the shoe. Um, are right, you remember the shoe that Tyreek Evan used to wear? Um, the hyper rev. Yeah, the hyper rev that he was like. He had like a customized pair for like yep. once he won the rookie of the year and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I remember him wearing that pair, and it was like a high top. And like he, I remember asking him when we when I was in New Orleans, like, hey, look, you. You really like wearing high tops, huh? He was like, "Yeah, yeah, I love wearing high tops. I can't wear low tops because I mean, I'm a bigger guard. I, I got to be able to cut and move this and that." Yeah. So, All right, cool, cool. So, I remember the year second, the second year I played with him. So when we got traded to Sacramento, they had actually like told him like, "Look, we, we stopped making that shoe, and you got to find another shoe to wear because it's, it's 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 not looking good for the shoe." Wow, so when they so when they make a shoe, it's on to the next. They just on to the next. I mean, that's that's what I, I I'm assuming. I remember remember him telling me like, man, I gotta find a new shoe. Gotcha. And okay. Looking for a new shoe, but I don't know exactly what happened because I wasn't with Nike at the time. I was. I was that actually, makes sense though. Nah, was that makes sense though, because like from the outside looking in, this is actually this is this is great content, honestly, because. Everybody, especially myself, I'm thinking when you're with Nike or you're with Adidas or you're with any of these big time companies, it's like I thought any shoe that was a part of the basketball line. I'm not talking about like, you know, if you're with Adidas, like, hey, man, I'm supposed to be getting the Yeezy, blah, blah, blah. Let me get the 750s. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about stuff like that. Like I thought anything that was in the basketball catalog that they made, you can you can go back and get. So that's 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 something different for me. And um you know, that was just my, my take because I always thought, okay, if I'm with Nike, if, if, say, for instance, I'm with Nike, I'm, I like the Hyper Rev, but they're not making the Hyper Rev no more. I thought, you know, all right, we still got some size 17 Hyper Revs in the cut. We'll send you 50 pairs or 13 pairs, whatever. You know what I'm yep. saying? That's, that's good to hear, though. So my thing is I'm looking at it from a business point, you know, from their, their perspective. They're looking at it like, look, we're on to the next technology. So that makes sense. Yep. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. So back to the original uh, question: you you would rock whatever you, you would try to rock whatever you can on the court as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would definitely rock whatever um, I had the opportunity to to wear, and uh, and I, I mean I have so many so many different like collabs and so many different um, like just like old school kicks. Yeah. Like, for instance, like I had like the the uh the Ashton Martin pack, I had those um, fire pack. Um 
What else do I have? Uh, like the the ones that uh the T Mac the All Star Game T Mac. Oh, yeah, those are to- those are dope too. The what else? What else? Like something that like what you could throw out there. I mean, just just uh, just think about like those two for instance. It's like those yeah. are two brands, but like they're two packs that like damn, like people like really they stood out. They stood out. Like, they would they haven't seen in a while, so it's yeah. like. To bring them out, people were like, okay. Because I remember when, when Jalen Brown bought it out, the first game, everybody was like, oh, sure, I haven't seen him in years. Facts. It's, it's, it's always cool to see, like, those type of shoes, like, bring back, like, memories for a lot of different people. So, definitely, yeah. definitely. Now, that, that definitely makes sense, yeah. Because, I, like I said, man, you know, I, I, I can imagine it's, it's – if you're a sneakerhead and you're a sneaker free agent, I know you're in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Because you're like, man – I could just be out here doing what I do, you know what I'm saying? But then at the same time, it's like, um, you know, if you you want to have that security, that safety blanket, and be able to be signed to like a Q4, or be signed to Nike and stuff like that. So it's it's a gift and a curse, basically. Yeah, you know it is. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. I wanted to ask, you know, obviously since you have your own shoe and we're talking about, you know, sneakers on court and stuff like that. What was the process of breaking down your own shoe? Like, did they ask you, you know, they run down, what do you like? Oh, I like low tops. I like I like high tops. This is how my foot's molded. You know, did they do a foot mold? Or how did they go about creating, you know, the LG9s? And, um, you know, and how did that all come about? Like, just talk about that experience. Yeah, so uh, it actually was a really fun process. Um it's probably like one of the, mo- the most like intriguing progress processes that I've ever been a part of just because they were able to allow me to, to pick and choose what I like, what I didn't like. Mm-hmm. And what I really w- was, I mean, at first I was kind of like hesitant to do, but then after I did it, I see that now, like that's the big thing now that a lot of, um, <coughs> like uh, big sneaker heads are doing like, um, uh, the sneaker con app. I mean, the sneaker con um IG. Yeah, the whole the whole crew. They all are like they. You know how they cut the sneakers open and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and different things like that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I actually did with uh a pair of the, uh the PGs um when I was uh the PG ones. I did that with the PG ones because I love the PG ones and how comfortable they were. Man, that's that's probably. That shoe, man, that's going to go down as one of the best all time. Yeah, no, nah, they, they 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 did a great job with that shoe. And it's like, um, hey, at the end of the day, it's like you, you got to – you really have to – I mean, hey, take – take pick and choose what you like and what you don't like from different shoes because – Definitely. Uh, that, that's what everybody else is doing. Yeah, definitely. You got to you gotta pick and choose to, to get that, that – that uh that number one masterful that masterpiece that you want you know yeah yeah so so you I, I, PG in half yeah cut the PG in half I uh sat down with them I like kind of Facetime them to show them like what I did and they they was like really like all right what do you what do you like what do you don't like and the main thing was the bottom making sure the bottom was sturdy um mm-hmm. not as flimsy because. The the model they sent me at first was kind of like flimsy, kind of like uh, real, like uh, real soft. So I was like, I needed something, I need something a little, a little sturdier. Sturdy, because I'm flat foot, I need something that's going to like be able to react to how my foot responds. So mm-hmm. uh, being able to to change that, and then this season I've really been able to like uh, do what I want on the floor and feel comfortable in the shoe has been great. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, and then and then being able to like knowing that going into each game, it's like I don't have to worry about uh, like if the shoes can be slippery or not because I know how to break my shoes in because it's like I might this might be the first time I'm wearing a shoe and it, it'll break in in a matter of like seconds. It's like I know how to like uh, get my back going and, and really like uh, loosen it up. So I'm like, man, yeah. this, is, this is perfect. And, it, and it's like it's my shoe, so it's not like yeah, I have to. Yeah, definitely. Like look on look on look on, look down and be like dang like this dude's shoes like it's, it's terrible so uh it's 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 pretty cool that uh I'm able to like really look back on it and like had the colors that I wanted put the different designs that I wanted into the shoes and and mm-hmm. it just 
be a part of something special that 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 means so much to me. I mean, hey, being undrafted and being able to have my own sneaker and being able to promote it as much as I can. That's I a mean, blessing. That's a blessing. I mean, who who would have thought that? I mean, I I don't think mm-hmm. going into playing basketball and looking back on like the journey I've been on, I, I would have never thought I had my own shoe at this point. But uh, I'm just trying to make the most of it and just hey, just enjoying it every single day. Now you definitely are, man. You definitely yeah. are, man. I can't wait to can't wait to get a pair, man. I'm telling yeah. you, I can't wait, man. Yeah, yeah, not for sure, for sure. And I mean, I know I don't know if you you said anything about. I mean, what we talked about, but uh, hey, you 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 got some big things in store. I don't know if you want to say it or not, but oh man, I'm, I'm, hey man, I got some big things in store. I'm trying to trying to keep it under wraps right now. Okay, but okay, yeah, you got everybody big- be on the lookout, you know, around uh around the uh, All Star Weekend, man.